Trash Blood Horror Cast is a mixture of horror movies, spooky stuff, and goofy dipshit comedy. Funny laugh laugh. You've been warned. Hey, this is Zach. And this is BJ. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Trash, Trash Blood, Blood Horror Cast. Hey everybody, welcome to Trash Blood Horror Cast. I'm Zach. I'm BJ. So guys, this time you're seeing us because uh, we uh, we are a podcast. If this is the first time you've heard of Trash Blood Horror Cast, we are a podcast. Uh, you can find us on Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes, Apple Podcasts. You can just look up Trash Blood Horror Cast on Google, and you're gonna find us on there, basically. And uh, we're all over the place, and uh, this is our first time doing a live video, or I guess it's not live, but we're recording a video for YouTube, and um, just being like in the time that we're in right now with uh, the pandemic and so many people being sick, we're not recording remotely, and we've had some trouble with sound issues and whatnot, and uh, technology is just an asshole, and we're so fucking, are you sick of technology, BJ? Dude. I am sick of technology, dude. And, you know, being stuck, like, only going to work and going home, you sort of kind of depend on technology because, like, after you've done everything at home, like, what else is there to do? You know, like, I got, I'll got, i play video games at home or I'll watch a movie, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, <clears throat> technology fucking sucks sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, so it's uh, we haven't recorded or put out an episode in about a month or so. Our podcast is a bi-weekly podcast, and uh, I don't know. This is us just trying something new um, because we're sick of, I guess, like I said, the technology part. So, like, this is just easier to record from our phones, and we can put it on YouTube because I guess there's a lot of people that watch stuff on YouTube as well. Them damn kids, am I right? But, uh, yeah, people watch podcasts on YouTube, so we figured we'd give it a shot. And um, just uh, give these people a rundown on what our podcast is, BJ. All right. So our podcast is a slash of horror and comedy. I like to say it's a nice mixture between the two. Um, we review movies. We have segments and stuff. Obviously, right now when we're doing the video, Things are coming out, like, kind of new. We're just getting used to this. So, like, the segment part we're going to work in, kind of like we did when we first started recording the horror cast all together in the beginning. If you go back and listen, like, you can kind of hear us talking about some of the stuff, like, wanting to put stuff together in a certain way. So this is the same thing. But uh, we do segments. Uh, we review movies. Um, and our, our closer is uh, we do spoof mashup like satire in a way scripts that we perform and use voices so yeah. that's something you yeah. guys get to look for too or, or it's like a sequel to a horror movie a mashup or a spinoff it's that has never been made before say uh, uh, you have nightmare on elm street freddy's bed instead of freddy's dead we have national lampoons uh poltergeist 4 we have uh, American Werewolf on Tinder. We have like uh, we have a lot of sequels and spinoffs and mashups, and we make them goofy as fuck. Um, I've been doing comedy yeah. and I'm comedy cop. now, and uh, I mean I consider this more of a comedy podcast than a horror podcast. I mean it is definitely that mixture, but like I don't know the creative side for me is usually more based around comedy, so we try to throw that in there. And our scripts are. Uh, out of doing 10 years of comedy, the funnest thing I've done, like comedy related for me, is the scripts that we do on the show. It's the most yeah. fun. I've had. It's like the hardest I've laughed. And uh, we just have a good time doing it. And um, the script we're doing at the end of this episode is called, uh, it's a demon called Mae Chonin. Is it a demon called or a demon name? Yeah, a demon called Mae Chonin. And uh, I know uh, I just said, you know, sequels and all that stuff. And, uh, that's uh, it's based off of a character that we threw in a spinoff sequel. We uh, put it in uh, 
It was uh, National Lampoon's Poltergeist 6, RoboCop meets the paranormal realm. So, yeah, we got RoboCop. We got Carol Ann from Poltergeist. She's all grown up, and she's like uh, she's like a fat hillbilly lady. Do the Carol Ann voice so people know what she sounds like, what she is as, in the Trash Blood universe as an adult. All right, here we go. Uh, <clears throat> Hi, my name is Carol Ann. And I eat them coffee, take takes all the time. I can maybe feed a dog to a chair and then <laughs> summon some demons come and fuck my butt. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's Carol Ann. Basically a washed up fat, um, like retired, you know, actor or whatever. Yeah. But uh so basically what we're saying, every all of our viewers, they're gonna be watching this. What we've done is we've basically created a universe, the Trash Blood universe. We have repeat characters that come back for scripts. We have dialogue that repeats in scripts. We have certain places that pop back up in scripts, so on and so forth. You, you know, so we have like a whole universe of stuff that we are incorporating in these scripts. It's not just a a script that we do per each episode. This is a, a a universe that we've built over these. How many? What episode would this be? Like 34? 34, 35. So yeah, we. Uh, hey, scoot back just a little bit because I think it's bucking on your forehead. Sorry, I'll edit that part out. <laughs> or will I? <laughs> so uh, yeah, like you were saying, we have uh, there's 30 something episodes. I think 33, 34 episodes on spotify and itunes and all that stuff and most of the scripts the first few episodes the scripts are in the middle but we decided since that was our favorite part and we thought it was the best part that we'd start putting the scripts at the end kind of like it's the closer of a comedy show basically so if you just want to hear the scripts you can go to most of those episodes and just kind of go towards the end of the episode and hear the script and uh, so the one we're doing tonight was part of, uh, you know, like I said earlier, a National Lampoon Poltergeist uh, 6, uh, RoboCop meets the paranormal realm. And there was a demon that I made up in uh, uh, that was in that script called Mate Shonen, and he is a horned demon, a goat, and, a, and uh, his demon horde with him are like kind of like stereotypical demons you see like in like classical like art or maybe not in classical art but like classical like 80s comic art almost like your demons with big horns and muscles and no genitals yeah. so this yes. ongoing thing in hell is like demons and satan don't have genitals or buttholes just based right. on demons that i've seen in the yeah. past but we have phrases that we use in a lot of episodes like zoingy boing doing that's like saying holy shit or something like that or you know, i'm excited zoingy boing doing and then we also have, uh, and I'm just going to point these out because, like I said, you might not have heard the show before. Uh, bad potty boy, bad potty girl. Um, that's one where someone's like, hey, I'm a bad potty boy. And then the other person says, bad potty boy, I don't even want to know what that is. And we kind of put that in every single script. And it's pretty close along that, uh, along that, like how I just said it, but sometimes we change it up a little bit. There's that, and uh, there's all sorts of, like, little Easter eggs we throw in, like, to every episode. Uh, rhyming is a neat thing for you. Yeah, <laughs> and, rhyming is a neat thing. And that's the, good rhyme, you... the other person will go, rhyming is a neat thing for you. And it's just, yeah. Well, what... It's good because you're writing in the rhyme. The person says it, and then the other person that you're dialoguing with is like, what? Rhyming is a neat thing for you, and it just pops in so randomly. So much in all kinds of places. Um, and and it should play off kinds of people, like, like when it's in the script, they're like, yeah, this is just part of everyday life. People say rhyming is a neat thing for you. People say it's only boy. But <laughs> right. that is, exists in the universe. Yeah. It really is. Um, and one thing I want to do here soon, like maybe next video or maybe here soon, like I think it'd be fun if you and I, uh, recorded us doing some of the old scripts like some of our classics that are our favorites yeah like I've done them and it's on the podcast but like them like live might be a whole different thing and it'd be fun to like redo those again because like yeah. I mean, that like i consider my favorite that we could do and uh i don't know i think it'd be fun but uh 
that's a rundown on trash blood uh horror cast it's uh comedy uh horror uh, we used to do paranormal stuff but uh kind of got a little goofy because there's just too much debunking you can do and we had some we had some good guests but we also had some guests that like were like okay that's not real at all so uh, we're kind of steering away from the paranormal part because originally we wanted to start a horror movie podcast anyways but we're both interested in the paranormal and we both uh have had experiences um ourselves so that's why we wanted to do it but like I mean, there's just a lot of debunking we could do for a lot of stuff. So, like, I think we came to the point where we didn't want to say on each episode, well, this happened, and here's my conclusion. I don't know. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> too- and there's plenty of paranormal podcasts out there that you can listen to and hear all that good shit about. It's I listen to some of them. It's still fun to do, you know? You know, honestly, I feel like sooner or later, me and you are probably going to go somewhere and do – a little bit of ghost hunting like for ourselves and you know maybe it wouldn't hurt to like take a camera and like maybe video some shit too you know what i'm saying and like yeah and we throw that in episodes i sent you a picture today that my sister for my birthday got me an emf reader an electro field reader which they used in ghost hunting and stuff she said she had something in the mail for my birthday and i got it i was like no shit i wasn't expecting that but uh yeah (laughs) Or, uh, listening or watching this so uh yeah that's awesome so i got that i got uh yeah we got cameras but yeah maybe we'll go to the crescent hotel or something like that in eureka springs and try to do a little yeah. ghost or maybe we just I'm find down. a house and say hey can we go there and do stuff i actually went to eureka like last week or the week before that one of the days i had off and uh, we drove up to the Crescent, but you couldn't go inside. We just kind of, like, walked around the grounds a little bit and, like, checked it out. You know what I mean? I che- I walked around to the backside where those chairs are. And you can see over the, the hill and, like, that little church thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know. If you'd, you'd, I'd have to show you. I but know. you basically, to the right of where you walk in, if you walk over there and around the corner, there's, okay. like, some chairs. And it's a hill that goes down, but it's a really good view. Yeah. Uh, we pretty much chilled over there for a little bit, but we couldn't go inside. I wanted to go in and get pigs, Just get some pictures. Off. Huh? Did they have it closed off? They had it closed for anybody that wasn't staying there. Yeah. Uh, okay. Makes sense. Makes so sense. People could get yeah. a room there, but if you weren't staying there, you couldn't go inside. Yeah. Yeah, Eureka Springs is an awesome place. If you guys haven't been there, Eureka Springs, Arkansas, is it's just an awesome town, man. It's got a really good vibe to it. Like, I went oh one summer I went there almost every weekend and got a little bit too drunk and just had a great summer though. Like I just went <laughs> summer in Eureka Springs, but yeah, we should definitely do like, if we can. Have you ever gone up on top of the? Uh, uh, you know the little amphitheater there right next to the Basin Park Hotel? Yeah. Uh, have you ever went up above that on the little trail up there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty fucking cool, dude. I never went up there until this last time. They do a drum circle there. Like, uh, like I think once a month or something, They'll like in the summertime, they'll get like a bunch of people together and they have like a huge drum circle. Like there's one guy with a drum set, there's bongos, there's like people bringing the snare drums. It's like... It's pretty fun. We went down there a couple times just to watch, and we went up above the ample ample theater there and uh, watched it. And yeah, <laughs> Arkansas people, you real idiot dickheads. It's a lot of fun. Real idiot dickheads. That's another term you're gonna have to get used to on trash. But but yeah. it's a experiment. That's just what we call our fans, and our fans are like, thank you so much for calling us real idiot dickheads. And they do this. With <laughs> their- <laughs> thank you for calling us dickheads when's the next episode dropping <laughs> <laughs> thank you for calling us dickheads <laughs> um before we get but into yeah, this it's a lot of fun, dude. we we do we have a lot of fun with this man and you know it's been like i think i can speak for everybody like that's dealing with it still that this covid shit has just really lowered morale for a lot of people and just kind of set in a little bit of depression probably for some people and like 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like times are really fucking hard right now, dude. And like, this is honestly a crazy time to be alive. It's the fucking time in our it's like shit we've never seen, and that's why it's shit that we've never seen before. That's why it feels so crazy. But like, it's just I don't know, man. It's on a whole new level now. Right. Yeah. This is definitely the craziest shit. We got the coronavirus and like, dude, it's over a hundred thousand people dead in the United States. There's people like still not giving a shit. Like, hey, let's go out Memorial Day weekend and stand in each other's mouths. Man, yeah. everything will be fine. Yeah. And everything spiked. And like dude, it's second, it, the, second, the, the second they said shit could open. Yeah. It was just like like you know, me like there's been a really long time where all I did was just go to work and go home and go to work and go home. And then when I wasn't in a relationship, I was going to work and pretty much going home and like barely going out to do anything. Honestly, every now and then I would be like, you know what? That sounds fun. Let's do that. But yeah. most of the time, just sitting at the house or going to work, you know what I mean? Like I can find comfort at home and I'm OK with that. But when you're forced to do it and shit, it's a whole yeah. different story because you don't have that option to go do something else if you feel like it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's it's weird. But we're getting through it, you know? Yeah. I'm just glad it's happening. I mean, I wish it wasn't happening at all, but I'm glad it's happening in the point of, like, where I'm at now in my life because I'm a way more responsible than I was, like, 10 years ago. Like, 10 years yeah. ago, like, a drunken fucking mess. I mean, I'll still have a beer here and there and whatnot, but, like, where I'm at now, dude, I just feel lucky to have the family I'm with and to be... I'm, I'm not sober. I mean, I'm drinking beer right now. Yeah. I'm not drinking beer, people. I'm drinking natural light seltzer, uh, strawberry kiwi. It's actually really fucking good, though. And, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, man... Um, it's a weird time because we can't really do that much. I mean, there is people out doing stuff. I just wish everybody would be safe about it. Like, if we would all be safe about it or we would quarantine for a certain amount of time, the shit could be over with and done, man. But uh, everything's crazy, not just the coronavirus. We got uh, the with Donald Trump in office and the protests going on. And, dude, it's... It's fucking crazy what our president is. Our president is a fucking monster, and he's racist and doesn't give a shit who knows. It's insane that he's in office right now, you know? Like, uh, like I'm sure that you saw, like, uh, God, it's the biggest bullshit I've ever seen in my life. Uh, did you see the photo op that he took with the Bible? Yeah. 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 He literally had people shoot tear gas or smoke bombs or what the fuck ever it was at protesters that weren't even doing anything. So he could walk across the street, stand in front of a church and hold up a Bible with his cronies and get pictures taken. Like, even the Pope is like, fuck this guy. Like, he's yeah. everybody off. But somehow he's still our president. And like, uh, I mean, my opinion on everything that's going on right now, the protests are awesome. I wish it was coming at a better time. Or, I mean, I wish it didn't have to come at all. I wish it yeah. cost black people i wish racism wasn't a thing still but there's still a lot of dumb fucking idiots out there but uh i wish it wasn't happening during the pandemic because the numbers are rising again but like i totally get it man like people are sick of black people dying everyone or not everyone i guess the people that are killing them don't care but i get what's going on and i get the riots i get the protests I get why a Target's getting burned down. I mean, it sucks for that Target owner, but, like, it's a big corporation. And right. I know looters and stuff in there that are in it for selfish reasons, but as a whole, people will be like, oh, no, my Target's burnt down. It's like, that sucks about your Target, but black people are constantly getting killed by cops. Yeah. Getting killed by KKK members. Getting killed by white people. And, yeah. I mean, obviously we're not out killing people <laughs> at all like this is why the protests are happening this is why riots are happening 
And like you were, you work in the Bentonville Square. Yeah. I guess uh, like where all that shit was happening. If you don't know, uh, Bentonville, Arkansas had a protest. And uh, the cops started shooting tear gas, started shooting rubber bullets uh, when it wasn't necessary whatsoever at all. Like, uh, you sent me a video of, like, now a mutual friend we have on Facebook. I've met the guy a couple times. But, like, I watched the video, and it was crazy, man. It's like, from what I've heard, the only thing that happened with civilians is, like, you know, there's a couple kids that set off some fireworks or something. Right. peaceful protest but the cops are just tear gassing people and shooting rubber bullets at people yeah i heard something today a city surrounded in riot cops when it fucking shouldn't be i heard something today um that uh there were agitators in the crowd um provoking so there could be a reaction and what happened was they got a reaction but it was a lot faster than expected it was the tiniest bit of provocation and it was like tear gas tear gas you know what i mean and yeah and then i heard that somebody saw these said agitators going into the courthouse like from the side or something after that like inside door open inside gone like a whole setup thing But that's a whole other thing. I don't know for sure. That's just what speculation that I've seen and heard. You know what I mean? This whole thing is crazy, if you ask me. I mean, I understand. I want. I want people to be able to. I'm. I'm tired of seeing people die just like everybody else, and I want people to be able to like speak their mind and people actually fucking listen. You know, and. I don't think looting your own town is very good. I think that that's fucking pointless. Like, you're going to fuck up somebody who worked their whole life to open a business. And you know what I'm saying? Like, that's in your own community. But then again, there's, like I said, there's so much speculation, like, people coming in and doing it. And it's not people from here. You know what I'm saying? Like, people coming from out of town to come to these protests and, like, looting the area and shit you know and that in itself is fucked up i mean if they want change you're gonna have to do something different besides the violence you're pissed off about yeah i can i can understand some of the looting for sure i mean it sucks when you see like like maybe if it's a small town and like people's businesses or that they put a lot of elbow grease into are getting fucked up that does suck yeah but, like, I don't know, I think the overall reaction, I mean, I say, fuck the people that are in it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. All that are doing everything for the wrong reasons or going about it the wrong way, and fuck them. And yeah. But the people that are doing it because they're actually fighting and they want to protest for the right reasons, and some things, I don't think are too big of a deal about getting looted. I mean... I personally think, I mean, it should be a peaceful protest all around, but at the same yeah. time, it shouldn't be fucking killing black people. There shouldn't be cops constantly killing black people. And they're not, the history of like their slavery, segregation is just still going on to this day, pretty much. And I can totally understand where all that fucking violence come, comes from. They're like, I am sick of hundreds of years getting treated like dog shit getting killed i'm gonna burn your fucking city down and i don't fucking care what you think i get it i get both ways man there's a lot that goes the whole thing that's going on here there's all sorts of different components of different people doing it for different reasons but as a as a legitimate protest as a legitimate thing man i mean i i'm glad the protests happen um it sucks that the coronavirus is spreading like if i was single if i didn't have a fiance and kids at the house, I would have been at the protest. I really would have. I would have toughed it out. And I didn't go to the protest because I didn't want to take the chance of coming home and giving the coronavirus to three people and two of them being kids, one being my fiance. I didn't want to take, but I'm still in full support of, you know, making this country better. Like somebody uh, fucking put Trump in a sleeper hole for a super long time. You know, (laughs) comes down to is the police are out of fucking control and everybody knows it 
They have this fucking immunity badge that they can stand behind and not have remorse for doing shit like that. And therefore, given that position and that opportunity, they're not going to hesitate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, they're not going to stop and think about it. If You know what I mean? Like, that guy stood or had his knee on that dude's neck for nine and a half minutes. He had his knee on his neck for four more minutes after he died. Yeah. You know? They're fighting, man. That's why people are trying to fucking... I, that's why I, I'm not totally against the riots, man. It sucks that people are uh, getting fucked up that don't deserve it. That part really does suck. But uh, when it's hundreds of years of murder, that's what fucking happens, I guess, you know? I mean, I can't blame fucking anybody for trying to make it right or get pissed off. And, yeah, I don't know, man. It's fucked up. But, uh, anyways... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like, I, I don't think we could like do the show and not at least talk about it there's yeah. too much in the world right now to not talk about what's going on like i'm gonna always share my opinions and you can share yours we can agree or disagree on anything you know unless it's trump then then you can fuck off but you know <laughs> right here's but, uh, my last one last opinion about this all of this shit worst thing that happened to america is the police becoming militarized, like having programs to get military equipment and military weapons and shit like that, like at a discounted rate or however the fuck it is, you know what I mean? But they have access to military shit, so when they have riots and they do all that shit, they're using military equipment, dude, and that, that shit shouldn't be used on civilians. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like that should be used. Like that's that's shit that they use for war. And war is the soldiers. Like the soldiers go over there, they handle the war, and they do that for all the rest of us. You know what I mean? So when these cops have this shit on the street and have this badge of immunity, they don't fucking think twice, dude. Like if they if they feel like they need to do it, they'll fucking do it, and it sucks. And it's scary as fuck. Like, I saw some of the Vitville uh, video, or one a video from somebody's Facebook, and uh, all these cops in this right gear, and right in front of them were, like, three 15-year-old boys. Like, scrawny yeah. little... And, like, these guys were getting pumped up and, like, patting each other on the back and giving each other thumbs up like they're ready to kick fucking ass. Wow, like you're fucking... fucking... linebacker ready to snap. Exactly, yeah. You but, know? Um... I just want yeah, this. We wanted to tell you guys like the rundown of the show. We had to talk about you know the coronavirus and what's going on in the world. Cause seriously, Black Lives Matter, man. If you're against that movement, then you're just missing the fucking point. Honestly, you're missing the fucking point. But uh, we're gonna take a break real quick, and we're gonna come back and do a segment we call Manifestation. And uh, we'll explain that when we get back. Hey everybody, welcome back to Trash Blood Horrorcast. Um, yeah, we're uh, back to do a uh, little uh, thing called Manifestation. 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 <laughs> so what we're doing is uh manifestation and if you haven't heard the show before if you're just you know watching this and this is your first time listening um what we do is we pick like a character or a movie or something from the horror movie uh genre it can be like like, hey, what would Dracula manifest into? Or uh, what BJ had one time was uh, the chain from Bub's neck in Day of the Dead. What would that chain manifest into? And, like, we're pretty much going off what would manifest, like, what kind of just pops in our head. Like, and it could be anything from, like, well, that's going to manifest into a cherry. 
But it could be an acoustic guitar fighting ninjas. That's what I'm trying to say. And space. And everybody's jacking off weird like. <laughs> because that's what you think would manifest into. So it's basically using your imagination. Like uh, we did Leatherface one time and it, he manifested into a paper bag full of old bologna that greased up the bag. And then he pulled it out. It had mold on it. You ate it. And then you shit out blood and mold and you had uh, mold farts. So that's the show that you're uh, watching or listening to right now. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. So uh, that. we take turns on who uh, brings in the topic or character or whatever for manifestation. I mean, manifestation. And uh, <laughs> BJ, it's uh, your turn this week. Uh, what do you have? What am I going to be manifesting? Oh, man. Um, okay, so what comes to my mind is Jason's machete. Do you think Jason? Yeah. Okay. I think that Jason Voorhees's machete would burn on first. <laughs> For some reason, I keep seeing a fork stuck in seaweed. Like it's just stuck in seaweed and it's like caught like on the shore of a lake or an ocean or wherever the fuck seaweed is, I guess the sea. And, <laughs> and it's like stuck in seaweed and it's on the fucking ocean uh, shoreline there. And it keeps getting like pushed closer and closer and closer, but the tide just brings it back and it just goes back out into the ocean because it just, uh, it just can't reach that far. And then a sea turtle comes by and it swallows that fork and it just rips up the insides of that sea turtle and like the sea turtle's stomach opens up and the intestines fly out. And then you see the fork just slowly float up from the water, come in front of the screen, we'll say. And it just turns around slowly, just dives off into the bottom. Of the <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think yeah. Jeff or he was a good machete would <laughs> into. Uh, okay, so. I'm seeing, I think Jason Voorhees's, Jason Voorhees's, <laughs> machete. Jason. Into, Jesus. Like, okay, so like, I see King Arthur's sword in this rock, dating back to like fucking forever ago in King Arthur times, right? And. <laughs> The sword is stuck in the rock, right? And this badass knight like pulls it out and just fucking slays like thousands of people. And this sword switches hands for like hundreds and hundreds of years, right? And finally, laying waste in a field, some dude comes by and finds this old sword relic in this field and decides to repair it and realizes, well, it's all fucked up, you know? So I got to put like a wooden handle on it and shit and like reach. Uh, and it becomes it becomes a machete but this man that was wandering through the field is a fisherman so he spends hours and shit tons of time on the ocean uh, fishing for tuna and he uses that machete to cut the tuna's heads off you know what i mean like well, he'll, he'll like stay out there and like cook tuna for himself so you gotta use that machete <laughs> anyways it gets lost in, in the ocean and floats up and it goes into Jason Voorhees' hand. And that's that's how he gets it, dude. That's 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 it. I like that. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you had I, a nice story there, like it was like turtles are gonna die. You're like, thousands of people are slain, people are getting killed. King Arthur is involved. I'm like, that turtle really got what he deserved. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, a, so that's basically what manifestation is. Manifestation. <laughs> yeah. So next I'm week, so I'm so fucking scratchy. I said my voice is so scratchy sometimes when I do that. I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's been times that we've done this segment, like we've done that part so many times, like the next day my like throat was sore from yelling. Yeah. 
death metal, black metal manifestations. But uh, yeah. yeah, if you guys have any suggestions, uh, so you can follow us on Facebook, Trash Blood Horrorcast on there, Instagram. Uh, I don't have a Twitter anymore because I just fucking hate it. And YouTube and all that shit. Just follow us on there. And if you guys have uh, any suggestions for a manifestation that you want, uh, I would say uh, message us on the Trash Blood Horrorcast uh, Facebook page. That's where we uh, check most of our stuff, and like we'll get back to you. So if you have any suggestions, just let us know. And uh, so uh, before we, we're going to talk about a movie. Uh, we like I said, we review a movie each time on the show, and we're going to review the movie Street Trash. And there's uh, going to be spoiler alerts, or as we call it, spoiler alert. Uh, yeah there's gonna be that obviously since we're reviewing a goddamn horror movie and uh we should just review horror movies not give anything away we just give each other a look like remember that one part remember and then the you know and then the (laughs) but uh before we do that, which is called Trash Blood Talks Flex, uh, I want to show you guys, uh, BJ, I've already sent you the picture, uh, but I did a my second painting. Actually, I'll show you my first painting. Like, not that it fucking matters. It's fucking terrible art, but uh, I'm always trying to do something fucking goofy. Uh, first painting I did. BJ, have you seen Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt? Some of it, yeah. So, do you know who Titus from that show is? He's the gay black guy? Yeah. Yes. Right. This, uh, Jill said she wanted me to paint something that she would like, so here's what I did. Can you see it? Yeah. Now, so, I'm going to, the way that Skype records, I'm going to, like, slide it past the camera, like, so. <laughs> But this is Titus uh, from Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, but it's Cowboy Titus. I have no idea why I made him a cowboy, that, but that's who he is. And it says, howdy, buckaroo, I'm Cowboy Titus. So there's that. I just started painting, and that's what I'm doing. And here's what I painted the other day. I sent this to you. So Hellraiser has Pinhead. This is Pinhead, but it's a little bit different. His name is Winhead because he likes to win. So basically, this is Pinhead. Let me see if I can do this. Yelling, yay, sports, next to a basketball goal. (laughs) This guy has red in it. I tried to write Winhead in red, but I fucked it up. So I just made a red sky, and it actually made it look pretty cool. But yeah, that fella right there, that's uh, Winhead. He's got six nipples. And uh, (laughs) that's... I painted that uh, with my uh, fiance's kids, too. They were painting other stuff, too. They're like, what are you doing? Like, this is Winhead. He's got a ton of damn nipples. (laughs) (laughs) The kids are cool as shit, though. So luckily, I got that (laughs) out. I got to show you my art piece that I'm working on so far. But I got to be honest, I haven't worked on it in over a month because I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do for the background. But it's out. I'll show you real quick. Last time you did this, you just showed me your dick. So uh, you're going to come back on camera and your, your dick's hanging out. I was like, check out this art piece. It's the place where I pee from. That's where all my pee comes from. All right. So <clears throat> before I show you this, scoot back. I didn't... Only half your face is in the screen. All right. All right. Before I show you this, I didn't draw this. I just did all the color and, like, kind of set up, like, the background and shit like that. But this was a, uh, like, a vinyl press that was carved out. And my boss was doing it for, like, a school project. And this was just sitting in the office. And I'm like, hey, what are you doing with this? And he's like, nothing. It was just, like, this test run thing. And I was like, can I have it and, like, do something with it? And he's like, yeah. So this is what I have so far. Oh, nice. I'll scroll it across. So, like, all that color, it's mixed media. And so, this in the border is all uh, cray- uh, colored pencil. This green in the face is marker. The eyes are colored pencil and marker. 
so it's like mixed media and these i did all the color and all the shading for all that stuff this cool. blue took me the longest because i had to shade it from the outside in and leave a strip of white so this red would show up so bright oh nice around so the border you just color it yeah pretty much but i'm setting up if you can see the background it's yeah. like checkerboard and so that's like what I'm stuck on. I don't know what I want to do with the checkerboard in the background yet. Yeah. What? But, who drew the picture of the zombie? Did you draw that, or did uh, did you just do the coloring and shading? It's a stamp. I just did the coloring and shading. Uh, the, skull, the skull thing was already there. It's just a stamp. But okay. I did all on top of it. Nice. That's cool though, man. It's awesome. Yeah. I'm still working on it. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get to uh, the movie, I suppose. You want to talk about street trash? You want to do trash blood talks flicks? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, bro. <laughs> First of all, what I want to know is, would we technically consider this movie like uh, borderline exploitation? Oh, it's definitely exploitation. Oh, for sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it is fucking, yeah, I mean, it, like, so. everything. Huh? Like, I mean, it's just, like, I mean, it's exploitation. I don't think they were trying to, like, totally shit on people, but, like, it was somebody that just made a movie and, like, here's what I think homeless people are, and here they are being goofy. But I, I so tell people what Street Trash is about. All right, so basically... <clears throat> It's in Brooklyn. It's like the setting is like Brooklyn, New York or whatever. Um, and there's a, a lot of like bums and homeless people. Um, a lot of it takes place in this like weird rec yard, like dump type place. Um, but what there's I call when I get done taking a shit, the rec yard. Yeah. Uh, but there's this local like liquor store. <laughs> <laughs> there's this local liquor store that find, this guy finds this case of liquor like in i guess in his dry storage or or like the basement of this place or something like that uh and he finds this box of liquor and he opens it and it's just like green liquor i can't remember what it's called or what it says but uh these homeless people buy it for a dollar a bottle and when they drink it it basically makes them fucking melt into this gross green puddle. Yeah, like green, purple, like all sorts of like neonish colors. And uh, it definitely looks 80s for sure. Like the colors are like neon green and like, yeah, purple and stuff like that. Right. Uh, but there, it also delves into all kinds of stuff. I mean, there's like gang rape in this movie. Um, there's some fucking gnarly death scenes. The guy that melts in the toilet and the guy that gets his head split with the fucking, um, uh, like CO2 tank thing that's flying. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? You know that, you remember that? Wait, which part was it? Remember the CO2 tank, like, flies and hits that dude in the head? Yeah, and, yeah. Like, yeah. his head and shit? That yeah. was pretty cool. That was cool. But, uh, yeah, this, this movie touches on a lot a lot of different shit, so it's kind of a standalone. Tell, uh, tell these real idiot dickheads, uh, <laughs> give them kind of the, uh, the rundown, uh, like, not like the whole movie, but like the basic rundown of what the movie is. Basically. Because we got the first part, like, they started selling – really cheap liquor to homeless people but what are like the other parts are like uh like what's the story about like when characters and whatnot well to be honest it's been a minute since i watched it i watched it like last week or the week before so i'm trying to think a yeah. little bit about uh i know that there's that one guy that's like i know about the two homeless dudes that are pretty much like um they're like upper class 
homeless, I guess is the best way to put it, because all the other people are like living outside in the dump and shit. And these two dudes kind of have like their own little shack thing with yeah. beds and shit in it. <laughs> so um but it's I'm trying to think, man. It's I wanted to watch it today, but I got off work late. It's like a, like a almost like a community of homeless people living in this junkyard. Yeah. And- the guy that owns the junkyard is this giant fat dumbass. Uh, <laughs> does he look like somebody, a certain somebody to you? This is kind of inside joke, but uh, he looks like Big Wayne. Oh shit! Yeah, I know who you're talking about. I remember. Big Wayne is a manager. I had at a restaurant or two. He's this big fat bald dude. Complete fucking idiot. I don't give a fuck if he's watching us or listening. He's not. Guarantee you, he's not. But just in case you are big Wayne, go eat shit. Um, <laughs> he looks like a compulsive liar, fucking dipshit. We know. So he uh, he uh, doesn't want the homeless people there. Obviously, I guess. I mean, it's his it's his little junkyard. But like they live there anyways. And like uh, like you said, they started selling this uh, liquor to homeless people. And like I guess there's only homeless people buy it or something. But they would take a drink of the liquor. And like like you said, they would start melting, and like their skin would start dripping, and like their like their hands would be melted into skeletons and shit. And um, yeah, it was based around this little homeless community. And there's there's this one head honcho guy in the homeless community that used to be in Vietnam, and he was like fucking psycho. Like he basically like uh, was one of those guys that you would see like like Universal Soldier or Dolph Lundgren has an ear necklace. He's like one of those yeah. guys. He didn't have the ear necklace, but he's a fucking total psychopath, like fucking crazy asshole. And uh, has like, like, I mean, that's not the reason he's an asshole. He's just a complete piece of shit, motherfucker. But uh, he has like, a, he's like the king of the homeless people or whatever. And like, he has like this woman slave. And uh, I don't know, the, that's basically what the movie's about. is about this little community of homeless people. Uh, there's antagonists, there's good guys, bad guys, all this shit. But uh, it comes down to uh, what happens at the end. I think uh, one of the homeless guys, uh, I can't remember the end of the movie. See, see, this podcast right here, we don't, <laughs> we don't remember things, God damn it. But uh, no, we, we uh, when it comes to the movies, we do talk a lot about like uh, what we think of the movies, like. Uh, like right now we're forgetting certain parts of it, but we're not trying to give you the details of every single part, I suppose. But uh, as a, as a whole, this movie, uh, Straight Trash, what do you uh, what rating would you give it? Like we give a Spooky Boy rating for each movie, one out of ten. We call it Spooky Boy rating just because that's what the fuck we call it. But uh, out of ten Spooky Boys, uh, what would you rate Street Trash? <sighs> I really like the death scenes in it, and you know that I'm a gore hound. I do. I like the gore, man. But um, I'm probably going to go with like an eight. Really? Yeah. I would because, okay, I liked it, but, and I thought it was really well shot, honestly for its time and shit, you know what I mean? It was really well shot, but uh, for the hype and stuff that I heard about it when I started looking into it, and then I watched it, I thought it was going to be a little more hardcore, but I mean, 8 is pretty good. You know, if I went top, complete, probably 8.5, you know. But you got to understand, we're talking... 80s kind of exploitation just all around kind of fucked up movie and i enjoy those but when it comes to the horror type thing that's not in my top type horror movies that i watch you know what i mean it's a horror movie and it's not at the same time the gore makes it a horror movie for sure right but not your typical horror movie i guess yeah but, but i mean eight eight is i did enjoy it i'll probably watch it again you know what I mean? Like, I'll definitely, like, check it out again. I mean, we watched Microwave Massacre. That was really good. Remember, you remember that movie? Holy shit, dude. I mean, anybody that's watching this horror movie 
type person probably has seen this movie and it's like they made it really shitty on purpose you know what i mean like just you know for the satire of it yeah yeah yeah. what a lot of 80s horror movies were like were like really cheesy and satire and stuff like that and like 180 one 180s movie that we need to do we keep talking about we definitely got to do night of the demons sometimes or sometimes that's one these movies but uh anyways so uh dude you're probably gonna hate me but uh for this uh spooky my spooky boy rating i'm gonna give it a four <laughs> yeah <laughs> i okay so the the gore scenes the special effects were fucking top notch yeah really good they the gore scenes like when they drank the alcohol like it would melt their body like there's one like guy that got really fat and he just exploded everywhere people's heads exploding the special effects were fucking awesome the top notch movies for the 80s fucking great special effects but i thought the rest of the movie just kind of sucked and like it had those components that like i like in certain movies like um like in cheesy movies that I'm looking for, you know, like Evil Dead or, you know, just there's a lot of cheesy horror movies, bad taste, which we also need to do. Like there has those components, like the acting is cheesy, there's stupid, goofy stuff, there's all this shit. But it was kind of like Microwave Massacre for me. It just didn't like, they were there, but it didn't like combine and make a good movie for me. I thought it was just like, eh, I liked the gore and that was about it. And, uh, and I even thought some of the characters were well played and interesting a little bit, but like maybe it was just like dialogue and story and stuff. And like uh, I was honestly really disappointed in it because I've heard a lot about it too, and I thought it was going to be I thought I was going to go in and watch it and be like, this fucking horror movie is awesome. This is like in my top cheesy horror movies. And uh, I do want to see who did the special effects though, because yeah, the special effects were super awesome, and that's why yeah. I give it. If the special effects weren't there, I'd probably give it like a two. But yeah, like, I don't know. It's just like I don't know. It just didn't do it for me for some reason. And like the rape scene was really fucking weird. I mean, no rape scene's like amazing, honestly. <laughs> but like, there's this big old fucking fat guy that gets on this Asian chick and he like shakes and wiggles him, wiggles himself in there, and it's just like really weird. I think it's supposed to be funny and like. I don't know, like, I thought the gore was right here, but every element of an 80s horror movie was, like, around it and just kind of, like, fading for me. Like, I don't know, it just didn't do it for me. Right. Yeah, the essence of horror was definitely there, but in my opinion, it was more of an exploitation-type movie. And, you know, I like those. I mean, Uh 8... I feel like eight is a general number for me when it comes to that kind of shit, because anything, in my opinion, like when it comes to horror, it's about the art of it. So like, yeah, there's sort of this already connotation about horror movies where they're some of them are already like shitty. You know what I mean? Like maybe sometimes people do it on purpose and make a shitty horror movie on purpose. Or sometimes it turns out where they're really trying and it just is shitty. You know, we've seen a few skin deep. You remember that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think I mean, this movie was definitely going for like on purpose cheesy. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I need to watch it again. Like maybe I need to get more stoned or something. I don't know. I feel but like I just it was also like I thought the special effects were so fucking good that the rest of the movie was just too subpar for me. I don't know. There was, it wasn't too interesting for me. It was like, it yeah. had that drama appeal to it. Like, uh, like the head homeless guy, he was a great villain. He really was. He was a yeah. psychopath. He was crazy. And it reminded me of like trauma movies, like a toxic Avenger and all that shit. But, uh, I don't know. There's just something about it that didn't like, like grind the gears the right way or twist the, twist that screw what am i saying yeah i don't know like it the special effects though i want to find out who did that i want to see what else they're doing what else they have done i want to watch more movies from them and it was was good it was awesome yeah i i was just you know when i come special effects alone 10 out of 10 sorry i didn't mean to say that well that kind of goes into what i was saying like 
in my opinion, when it comes to that kind of thing, a lot of my score is going to depend on how the death scenes are executed. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like if I really wanted to, I could break it down and make a bunch of different like polls and type shit in voting ranges for myself worth of movies you know what i'm saying that are like like how the kills executed what kind of kill they use like how the person you know went into the kill how the whole thing was set up you know what i'm saying like there's an art it's like it's like an art like to anything else like i don't give a fuck about wrestling anymore really but i respect it and there's a good there's an art to making a perfect match yeah like there's Every make it like the best of what it is, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Like I, they didn't fuck around on the special effects. Like uh, there might have been one, maybe that like they kind of like didn't show too much, but it was all like right there. They put elbow grease into all the fucking like death and all that shit. And it was really fucking cool. Yeah. Definitely respect. Uh. I did I did enjoy that aspect of it. You know what I mean? Um, I like 80s movies in general. Yeah. So stuff like that where it's like, because, you know, if you notice, like when you're watching that movie, a lot of it's like black and white at first and then it turns to color, but it's still really like sloppy color until it comes to like the nasty like puddles that the guys are melting into and blood and all that shit. And I think whenever they can execute that and make that blood and all that stuff brighter than everything else, it makes for a better yeah. quality thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's almost highlight. Well, all right. Well, that's what we think about street trash. Street trash blood. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, so we're going to take a break real quick. And uh, we're going to come back and we're going to do a Trash Blood original sequel is what it's called. The scripts we were talking about earlier. We're going to do a demon called Mei Chonin. And he is a character off of National Lampoon's Poster Guy 6, which is in like one of our last few episodes, I think. Uh, I don't know. But uh, yeah, we'll be back here in a second. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, welcome back to Trash Blood Horrorcast. Um, we're moving into our uh, our last segment here, the script. Um, so we're going to each do some voices. Zach, do you want to go over whose voices, who's going to be who? Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, like we said before, we're doing we're doing a script called A Demon Called May Chonin. <laughs> Um, it's a spinoff of another script we have. We've already talked about it, so you know what I'm saying. And uh, I'm going to be Mae Chonin. Uh, BJ is going to be Satan and this demon called uh, Stweldo. And uh, I'm going to kind of be the rest. Uh, we'll introduce them as we go. But um, Satan is in most of it, so that's why you only have two parts, because Satan's the main character, and he's the main character in my heart. But uh, (laughs) (laughs) shit, man. So yeah, if you haven't heard Trash Blood yet, you're gonna see some goofy ass motherfucking shit. Like we've been pretty tame this episode compared to some episodes where we're fucking goofier than dog shit. Is the screen cut me off if I sit right here like this? I would scoot back just a little bit. All right, now take out your dick, <laughs> yell at it for a while, make it cry. Yell at it, tell it it's a dumb dick. Fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> your dick is really long and pointy, it's weird. <laughs> so yeah, all right, here we go. We're going to do Trash Blood's original sequels. First time on video. You ready for this shit? Yeah, you are. A demon called May Chonin. Interior, a small cave in the darkest pits of hell. There's a log fire in the middle surrounded by six cloaked demons. 
Outside the circle, Satan sits on a throne. He has a huge, or he has huge ram-like horns and the face of a demonic-looking T-Rex. He has huge muscles, wings, and absolutely no genitals or butthole. The demons are quietly chanting to the flame. Those losers don't have genitals or buttholes either. No one in hell, <laughs> no one in hell does. Satan stands up and says, Silence! The demons go quiet and continue to stare at the flame. Satan says, Wow, guys, what a delightful fire. Who built this one? A goat-headed demon named Machonin looks up at Satan and says, Twas me, my lord. Well, big ups to Machonin. The wood is set up perfect for campfire treats and fall tales of the infinite darkness. Uh, yes. Thank you, sire. No. Thank you. <laughs> Satan pulls out his... So blah, blah, blah. Satan pulls out his satanic cell phone and makes a call. Hey, it's me. Can you bring us more supplies to the tiny cave of infinite suffering? Please and thank you. Oh, yes. Maychonin made the most delightful fire. <laughs> Maychonin leans into another goat-headed demon and says, Hey, Stweldo, what the hell's going on here? I don't know, man. He's been acting like this ever since he joined Oprah's book club and watching the Home and Garden Network. I haven't seen him eat any guts or souls in two days. It's strange. Very strange indeed. Okay. Thanks, Wander Gorp. He hangs up and throws the phone in the fire. He says, Eek! We're having a s'mores, y'all. <laughs> A woman or a woman snake faced demon named Slithothius pulls her hood down and says, S'mores are quite desirable. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> S'mores are quite desirable, master. But when will you be naming the head demon? Soon enough. Slith out, Slitherus. Be Slithotius. patient. <laughs> Slithotius. Be <laughs> patient, my dear. Yes, my lord. Another demon named Screaming Demon with no eyes or nose screams with a mouthful of razor sharp teeth. <laughs> As if, screaming demon, that attitude isn't going to get you anywhere. <laughs> Maychonin leans into Squeldo again and says, uh, he did just say, as if, correct? Yeah, man, it's fucked up. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Satan grows ten feet taller and is engulfed in flames. He angrily yells, who the fuck just said my name? No, just said that name. It's Jesus. <laughs> fuck just said that name. It was the Smelly Pig Brothers, my lord. Two pig-faced demons look up and say at the same time, There's pig squills, too. Squeldo says, It was totally the Smelly Pig Brothers. <laughs> no one says that name around me. You're fucking dead, you pig fuckers. Satan charges them and rips them to shreds. Slithotheus looks at Machonin and Sweldo and says, Are you two shit stains forming a pact or something? 
do you really give a shit if he's ripping the smelly pig brothers apart? I guess not, actually. Fuck those slimy, smelly fucks. Satan wraps up the slaughter and turns around smiling. He says to Blundergorp, or he says as Blundergorp walks in with the s'more supplies. ooh Yummy yip yip! It's time to get our s'mores on, y'all! <laughs> Rhyming is a neat thing for you! I didn't rhyme, you doofus, but I love you anyways. Let's eat! They gather around the fire to make s'mores. Screaming Demon takes a bite of a s'more and it drips on her chin. She screams. <laughs> Screaming Demon, maybe let it cool down before you shove it in your disgusting face. I wish we had some lemon meringue. <laughs> I just... <laughs> <laughs> Wish we had some lemon meringue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fuck. <laughs> Screaming demon lowers her head in sadness. Satan says, Now, Maytonin, tell me a story filled with terror and despair. Yes, my lord. People on Earth are still paying money to see the band Five finger death punch. Ah! Fuck! That was scary. I think I pissed a little. <laughs> Even Satan hates five finger death punch. Satan looks at his crotch and says, Well, no. Still no genitals. No genitals. No me, me, no moo, moo. <laughs> yeah. Sing me a nice little song about torture. Swildo says, Oh, uh, okay. Ever since I heard Oprah listen to the music, I have been, I have been too. Now, sing, Swildo, sing. Oh, uh, when it comes to having a fun time, I tend to choose torture. I rip off fingers and cut their nipples. Waterboarding can be a... Waterboarding can be a treat. I bite their nose sometimes. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, swell though. That was just marvelous. I had no idea you could sing so well. Your mama must be so proud. Uh... Thank you, Master. You're welcome, Bopper Stevenson. All right, Lithotheus, your turn for the talent portion. I want you to juggle three of those flaming logs. Master, I have no idea how to juggle. I've never even tried. Well, I mean, if you don't really feel like being head demon, that's cool. No, no, no. Of course I can juggle fire logs. I'm not a fucking idiot. (laughs) I'm very excited to see this, Slithopheus. Maybe after that you can juggle my balls. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha. Funny laugh, laugh. Oh, shit, wait. No, I I, I don't have balls. Never mind. Still a good joke, Maytonin. <laughs> Fuck you. Enough of the drama. Juggle them logs, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say that to somebody, like, out of context. Go up to somebody and say, hey, enough of the drama. Just juggle them logs, girl. Okay, anyways. She grabs three logs out of the fire and tries to juggle them. She immediately drops them. Satan says, Try again. You got this, girl. Yes, Lord Satan. She tries and fails again. Satan says, You bore me. Blunder Gorp, send her to Carol Ann's house. We could use another sacrificial dog. 
Fire! No, please! No! She smells dreadful. Caroline is always farting. <laughs> have a good night, dear. Screaming demon, you're out. You don't have eyes. You can't even fucking see. Blundergore, send her to Loch Ness. Rufus McJonas could use a new creature. Blundergorp es escorts them out. Satan says to Majone, or says to Majone and, and Stwaldo, Looks like it's between you two fellas. Let's have a fun little game. You've probably never played it before. It's called Race! Uh, race? You mean like, uh, like a foot race? That is correct, Majone. I shouldn't have just doubted you. You're a smart demon. You should join Oprah's book club with me. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can do that, I guess. I know what this is, too. Oh, can it swell, though? You don't know Jack from shit. You're just a bad potty boy. A bad potty boy? That's impossible. I don't have genitals or a butthole. <laughs> still are still are <laughs> okay then let's do this I'm fast as the dickens I'm faster than the dickens I am the dickens Mark gets it go wait 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 what where are we running just fucking run somewhere. Go fast. They run in circles while the Benny Hill music plays. Say it. <laughs> they run out of the room with no idea where they're going. They're neck and neck. Machonin says, dude, Satan has lost his fucking mind. Bro, bro, tell me about it. I guess we'll just keep running? I guess so. I mean, but one thing, Sweldo, you're a good friend, but this is some head demon shit, man. Machonin sticks his foot out, tripping him. Sweldo falls right on his face, knocking some teeth out and chipping a horn. He says, Oh, my teeth, that's an owie. <laughs> Machoni keeps running in random places for about two minutes until Satan yells, Stop! Stop! Yay! Good job, Machoni. You won the race. Now get your big bad baby boy buns over here. <laughs> Machoni starts walking over to Satan. Sweldo gets up in pain. He runs toward Machoni yelling, You're dead! You're dead, Machoni! Machona looks up as he's about to get tackled. Sweldo turns into flames and ashes. Satan says, Fucking Sweldo. He's always been a sore loser. I beat him in Jenga last week and he cried and said I cheated. He gets to Satan and says, Thank you for stopping him, master. No problem. All in a day's work. Well, let's get you sworn in as head demon. I am honored, my lord. I shall not let you down. They go to a huge room that's basically a cave. Everything is cave-like in hell. They walk up to Satan's ritual altar. Satan summons everyone to a huge room. My, my children, my children, I summon thee to the ritual room. They walk up. Uh, the walk up the stone stairs and get to the ritual altar while the demons gather. Satan stands at the altar and Machonin stands beside him. There's hundreds of different breeds of demons, but not a single genital or butthole in sight. Satan says, Hello, y'all. Good to see your all pretty little faces. After the ceremony, there will be spinach dip, bread bowls, and a veggie tray in the break room of terror. Let's get started. Machonin thinks to himself, spinach dip, bread bowls, and a veggie tray? 
No wonder it's taking so long to take over Earth. We are gathered here for the sacred ritual tonight, a new head demon. It's been years since the wretched father Wishbone defeated Jababu, and we finally have a worthy head demon. The demons cheer. <laughs> May Chonin, kneel before the altar. Oh, gosh dang. I can't wait to num num on those bread bowls. I have fresh spinach for my garden this year. Thanks, home and garden. <laughs> May Chonin thinks to himself, things are going to change. I'll lead with an iron fist. <laughs> Satan picks up a goblet and cuts his arm with a sacrificial knife. He pours his blood into the goblet and raises it in the air, he says. With this blood of pure evil, I shall crown you, Maechonin, head demon. Before you drink thy blood, you must repeat the incantation after me. Do you understand, Maechonin? I understand, master. Repeat after me. Zondar, twinkle toes. Zondar, twinkle toes. <laughs> oh, shit, okay. Bumble, bumble jump spit rocket. Spit socket. <laughs> Bumble jump spit socket. <laughs> nice, mate, Jonan. You're doing really good so far. Two more left. Here we go. Bopper Stevenson. Flop stick barrel baby. Flop stick barrel baby. Short jammy chode water. <laughs> Wait, uh, is that really <clears throat> short, jammy, chode water? <laughs> Zoingy, boing, doing, mate, Shonen. Good on you for a perfect insp incantation. Now, drink the blood. Just pretend it's strawberry lemonade. Yummy, yip, yip. <laughs> mate, Shonen takes a big drink. <clears throat> yeah, get in there, bud. <laughs> Maychonin, uh, Maychonin heads. Wait, what? Oh, Maychonin hands the goblet back to Satan, and he sits it on the altar. Satan says, "Rise, Maychonin." Maychonin rises and stands before him. Satan says. The blood from my evil body now turns you into head demon. Maechonin floats a couple of feet off the ground and has a bright, smoky red aura throughout his whole body. His eyes turn from yellow to pitch black. He says, The power! I can feel it! I can feel the power throughout my whole body. Feels good, huh? It's like nothing I've ever imagined. He floats back down. Satan says, With the power of malevolent blood, you are now head demon. The demons cheer. Let's get it started in here. <laughs> Satan leans into Mechona and says, And also, you probably have hepatitis now. I went down on Courtney Love on my last trip to Earth. Oh, gross. I shall not let you down, my lord. I know you won't, Mechona. You're my best friend now. Now for your first job, Okay, sorry, I was on the wrong page. Interior. 
a small southern style church in Mississippi. A pastor is doing his sermon for 15 happy people. He says, God loves all his children, but God shall give it, and God shall. His eyes turn black, and he says in Machonin's voice, Taketh away. <laughs> his fingernails grow to claws, and he slashes the organ player's throat. <laughs> Everyone runs to the door screaming. The doors won't open, and Machonin says, Where's your God now? <laughs> he rips everyone to shreds, leaving a small church covered in blood and guts. Six years later, interior, Machonin's cave office in hell. He's on his satanic cell phone. He says, Yes, sire. We shall confront Robocop and his crew of idiots. Consider Rambo's severed rotting dick as good as ours. <laughs> he throws the phone in the fire pit and says, Slay, come forward. Wendell the caretaker comes out of the shadows and says, Hey, mate, Jonah. What's shaking today, man? <laughs> I'm going to Earth to get Rambo's wretched tallywhacker. End of times draws near. Wendell, Wendell, fuck. Wendell pats his head, rubs his belly, and says, Strawberry kush. Strawberry kush. <laughs> Knock that off, buffoon. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I can't help it. Don't call me, dude. Shit. Sorry, Master Machonin. <laughs> Get the ancient unbreakable penis chamber ready. I shall return shortly. Yes, sir. Can you maybe get me some weed while you're on Earth? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Machonin walks out of the room. And a group of demons follow him. They walk into a portal and transport to Carol Ann's house. The portal closes. Wendell, the caretaker, says, Is drink a gallon of donkey cum for a hit off a joint? Fuck. I drink a gallon of donkey cum for a hit off a joint. <laughs> the end. <laughs> All right, so yeah, that was uh, Trash Blood, or not Trash Blood Talks. <laughs> what am I saying? That is Trash Blood Original Sequels. Um, like I said, we do that on every episode at the end of it. It's uh, our own scripts for movies that have not been made. And Machonin is a spinoff of uh, another episode. Go So uh, maybe, go listen, maybe go listen to those 30 episodes if you haven't already. But uh Anyways, BJ, this is our first uh, video recorded episode. What do you think, man? It was awesome. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> hey, demons, demons cheering. Uh. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. <laughs> We're doing the wave and shit. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, so we'll be back uh I don't know. Uh, how, uh, we might do this weekly. We, we might do it bi-weekly. We don't know yet. This is this whole video thing is still new for us. Um, yeah, but I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, keep watching. Subscribe on the YouTube channel. This should be the, I guess, first uh, episode uh, that's going to be on the YouTube channel. BJ, can you still hear me? Yeah. Okay, your screen your screen froze up for some reason. Looks well, pretty cool. Like you're about to slam Dr. Kane. But <laughs> am I, am I, is it still froze up? Yeah, it's still frozen. But don't worry, we're at the end of the episode, so fuck it. But uh, yeah, thanks everybody for listening. Uh, listen to the podcast on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcast, iTunes, SoundCloud. Uh, just type it on in on that damned old Google, and uh, you'll find it. And uh, we'll be back uh, for another video cast podcast thing uh next week i guess so uh all right so uh bye, bye guys enough of the drama
Juggle them logs, girl. Significant, significant, significant.